Hello, hello. This is your girl, Megan. Welcome back to my channel. If you're already a subscriber, and if this is your first time joining me on today. Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> So make sure you go ahead, hit that subscribe button because you know you want to. So with that being said, I am here today to do a reading on Miss uh, Sherry Johnson. Now, I came across her on Facebook. She's a human rights activist from Tampa, Florida. And her story is a rather interesting one. So I thought it would be worthwhile to do a birth chart reading on her. So at the age of 10, Sherry was raped and actually impregnated by a church member. And instead of prosecuting said church member and grown ass man, they actually, they being Sherry's parents, forced her to marry her rapist. And she ended up having like six children with him, I believe. And I believe she remained married to him until she was around 17 or 18 years old. And then later on in life, she became an activist, a lobbyist, to help make child marriage illegal in America. So to provide a little bit more context to her early life and upbringing, I'm gonna read this Wikipedia article and then we're gonna go ahead and get into the reading, okay? So Sherry Johnson was born September 11th, 1970 in Tampa, Florida. They did not have a birth time secure for her, but I kind of finagled it and finessed it. I was just guessing really. And I ended up with, like she has to be born at noon because it shows her as a Scorpio ascendant and based off of the different placements in her chart. I mean, it seems to check out and it seems very, very accurate. So I'm willing to put money on her being born in the afternoon. Um, so there's that. So it says, Johnson grew up in Tampa, Florida. She was an only child and her household consisted of her, her mother, and her mother's husband. They lived in the parsonage of their conservative Pentecostal church. Okay, peep that, they lived in the church. So beginning at eight, Johnson was repeatedly raped by the bishop and deacon of her church. Johnson was also raped by her mother's husband. She became pregnant as a result of rape at 10. The pregnancy was not recognized until she was seven months along in gestation. Johnson's mother did not support nor believe her statements that she was raped and did not accompany her to the hospital when it was time to deliver her baby. Wow. Johnson's mother arranged for her to marry the deacon who had raped her. Alfonso Tolbert so that he could avoid criminal charges. And I'll be looking up Mr. Alfonso Tolbert's chart um, sometime later on because I want to take a look at that motherfucker. At this time, 16 and 17 year old minors could get married with parental permission in Florida and children of any age could be married with the permission of a county judge if pregnancy was involved. While the first judge refused to license the marriage of a child so young, though it was legal, a second judge agreed to grant the license and Johnson was married to Tolbert on March 19, 1971 at the tender age of 11. Johnson had six children by this man. Okay, by the time she was 17 years old and had to drop out of school after the ninth grade to raise them. At the age of 17, she sought help from Legal Aid Society, which gave her $75 to pay for an attorney for her divorce. Johnson published a book detailing her experience as a child bride titled Forgiving the Unforgivable. She is opposed to child marriage and on the basis that children cannot enter into other legal contracts. Johnson stated, you can't get a job, you can't get a car, you can't get a license, you can't sign a lease, so why allow someone to marry when they're still so young? Johnson also believes that permitting child marriage allows rapists to escape the legal consequences of their crimes by marrying their victims. Speaking on how she was forced to marry the man who raped her, Johnson said, no one actually protected me. They protected him by putting the handcuffs on me instead of putting the handcuffs on him, and he was the rapist. And this story made me so sick to my stomach, you guys. And to think that there was a time in this country, just in the world, period, where it was okay to do this. And if you want to be honest, there are still places where 
people are marrying little girls, you know, child brides. Like, the shit is crazy. It's crazy. So I definitely want to get into her chart because she has a lot of juicy stuff here. So as I said before, she was born on September 11, 1960 in Tampa, Florida. Her son is in the 18th degree of Virgo. Now, that 18 deals with upheavals, crises, secrets. It deals with trauma. And given that her Virgo falls in her 11th house, this could deal with there being abuse covered up in the church. Because, you know, your 11th house is your associations, your um, house of friendships, organizations. So this could absolutely deal with lots of uh, scandal being um, swept under the rug as it pertains to that Pentecostal church that her family was associated with at that time. And with the son actually representing a woman's husband in her chart, this could absolutely be Alfonso. And I see that her son is making a square to her asteroid Juno. Remember, Juno is the asteroid that deals with your relationships. Her Juno is in the 15th degree of Sagittarius. Now, this deals with her marrying a man in the church, right? Alfonso being a man of the church. Her son is also making a trine to her Saturn in uh, Capricorn. This deals with Alfonso being significantly older than Sherry. Her Mars is conjoined to her moon in the sign of Gemini, which falls in her eighth house of secrets, occult, death, sex, uh, mysteries, you know, trauma, rebirth, all of that shit. Because the eighth house is naturally ruled by the sign Scorpio. And with these making a square to her son, this is Alfonso being a pervert, really, uh, actually having a thing for young girls. And I found it interesting that her moon was in the sign of Gemini, just because typically a lot of times I see that Gemini moons, if they're on the darker side, if their mothers were on the darker side, they had moms who probably had children before they were ready to be mothers. Okay, this produces somebody who has kids, but kind of feels like she wants to live her own life. So in a way, she leaves her children to fend for themselves. And I see this is a reoccurring theme in Sherry's chart, that her mother was very negligent and probably even resented her on a certain level. And with the son also representing the father. This aspect could also point towards there being incestual relationships between Sherry and her stepfather, which was interesting because the article did say that she was raped by her stepfather as well. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if there were more men who had been sleeping with her around that time. Because in one article that I read before I did this video, it was saying that when she found out that she was pregnant, she had to do the math. And I'm like, what fucking 10 year old has to do the math when they find out that they're pregnant? Granted, they did mention she was raped by her stepfather also, but that just kind of really heightened my suspicions, especially with this placement here, her son square Mars, that she probably was like, a what do you call it? Like a, a spectacle of the community like she was in a position a very vulnerable position and she probably did attract a lot of men who sought to take advantage of her sexually I would not be surprised her Venus is making a square to her Saturn in Capricorn and uh, her Saturn falls in her third house which is your house of communication uh, early childhood, short distance travels, long, uh, excuse me, short or lower level communications rather, and even siblings. So Saturn here could make somebody who does not have any brothers or sisters, who's an only child. And I think they did say in the article, yep, she's an only child. So there's that. Saturn here also tends to limit the education of the native. And I do believe they did mention her having to drop out of school because she had to care for her children. So that explains that as well. 
Saturn in the third can also produce somebody who grew up in an impoverished environment. And they did say that the family was kind of hard off, which was the reason why they leaned so hard on the church in the first place for financial support, security, and of course it backfired. And with her being a Scorpio ascendant, her Venus, which is in the sign of Libra, falls in her 12th house of hidden enemies, losses, things of that nature. So with that being said, this aspect, Venus square um, Saturn, can produce somebody who is the subject of a lot of like, like the desire of older men, so to speak. Venus in the 12th house tends to bring about forbidden taboo kind of relationships anyway. Like the native feels like there's something about their relationships that they have to keep on the low, out the way, you know what I'm saying? Out the public eye. And if enough uh, negative aspects exist as it pertains to that Venus, it could create a situation where that person can be a victim of predatory influences of you know obsessive compulsive behavior like stalking and rape and things of that nature it points towards her being raped by these older men in her community and this is just reinforced with her saturn being conjoined to her asteroid juno which is in the sign of sagittarius in her second house and sagittarius just for scorpio ascendants in general i seem to find that they grow up in environments where the parents are either very, very religious or very, very spiritual. My daughter is a um, Scorpio rising also, and I'm not religious at all, but I definitely have my own, um, you know, spirituality that I cling to. And so, yeah. So with that being said, this aspect in and of itself reinforces the theme of her being a victim of predatory men in the church, point blank, period. Her uh, 11th house sun being squared by her Jupiter, her which is in the sign of Sagittarius, further just reinforces the theme of her being dominated and controlled by men in the church. She has a lot of religious um, aspects in her chart. Her Chiron falls in her fourth house of Aquarius. The fourth house is naturally ruled by cancer. So it symbolizes the home life, the mother, the things that were going on behind closed doors. And this points towards her, I'm thinking living in the house with a pedophile, with a couple of pedophiles. Because, you know, Aquarius is the sign of perversions. And I think they said that she was living at the church as well. So, I mean, once again, this ties back into the church. And then her stepfather was a, a pedo. So... I, her chart is is something serious y'all she got a lot of shit going on a lot but with Chiron being the wounded healer and the whole concept is once you undergo a certain type of transformation to your character and you actually heal from these deep-rooted traumas it serves as one of your greater strengths as far as things that you can help other people with so this could also represent her being an advocate of justice and an advocate for other people who were abused. Her black moon Lilith is in the sign of cancer. So, and Lilith is in its detriment in the sign of cancer. So this usually produces a really, really, really fucked up living situation as far as like at home. And obviously that seems to be a reoccurring theme in her chart. And this could produce somebody whose mother chose a man over them this could produce somebody who suffered a great deal of abuse obviously at the home this could be somebody who's as I said mom was kind of preoccupied with other things so that reinforces that theme here uh, with her mom being gravely negligent her son is square to her moon this is an aspect that nine times out of ten indicates somebody whose parents weren't together either your parents I have this aspect personally and my mother um and my father broke up when she was pregnant with me so in this case because I think they said her I mean that's the reason she has a stepfather to begin with I don't know exactly what happened to her her uh, biological father but yeah this points towards her parent her biological parents not being together now with her Gemini moon making a quincunx to her Neptune, I actually wouldn't be surprised if her mother had a mental illness, uh, if she was suffering from some type of disease, 
or if she was on drugs. Because, I mean, there is no way a logical person in this here and now could allow some shit like that to happen to their child. Even by those standards. Because, I mean, what? The, the, it was the 60s, but that it, it technically wasn't that long ago. Because <laughs> I'm thinking this was a case from, like, the 30s, you know, the 20s, the 30s. Like, the my stepfather was born in 1965. This lady, um, Miss Sherry, was born in 1960. That's five. She's five years older than my stepfather. That's not that that long ago. So it, I just have a hard time believing somebody of a sound mind would actually sit there and witness their child being tormented by several men, including your own husband. And then it's just too much. So I, I do believe her mother suffered from some type of um drug addiction or illness now sherry's uh mercury is in the 28th degree of virgo very close to that uh anoretic degree there and it's making a square to her mars so this could be sherry just blowing up the spot you know what i'm saying her telling any and everybody her story you know it, it means to get herself up out of that situation exposing these folks putting them on full blast Sherry's Chiron is in opposition to her midheaven and this is her pretty much just making a career out of being a human activist. Somebody who is standing up for, you know, child brides, people who undergo, like I said, a lot of abuse, a lot of trauma and her Mars being, what is this? Her Mars is in opposition to her Jupiter, um, yeah, this points towards the church colluding, her family even, her mom helping collude uh, to cover up the crimes committed by this man, you know, doing things to help him avoid jail time. And a lot of times it has to do with protecting the brand of the church. And she is a Pisces South Node, which makes her North Node in the sign of Virgo. And it's conjoined, her North Node is conjoined with her son and her Pluto in that 11th house. And that North Node placement, once again, supports the whole theme of her being at the disposal of powerful men. But it can also symbolize her rising to popularity and fame by taking these organizations head on. And with Pisces, oftentimes dealing with victimization, it's apparent to see that Miss Johnson is doing her soul's mission. She's doing her soul work. She's moving out of the role of victim and into the role of the, you know, um, humanitarian, the person who fights for the underdog, the person who exposes a lot of these nefarious groups. And unfortunately, she had to go through a lot to serve as an example to others. So that concludes my reading on Miss Sherry Johnson. I just thought there were a lot of interesting pieces of information in her chart that were quite telling. So with that being said, drop down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about this reading. Drop any suggestions you may have on any other readings you would like to see from me in the future. And I know you already hit that thumbs up button. Okay, we're on our way to a thousand subscribers, which may not be much to a lot of people. But, you know, your girl started from ground zero, quite literally. And the sky is the limit. So shout out to all of my new subscribers. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And don't forget, make sure you practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And as always, until next time, I holla.